particularly around backup and data recovery and how you can utilize the public cloud for that. So with that, Matt, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Larry, and, and uh, thank you everyone for joining uh, today. What we're going to be talking about today is disaster recovery uh, as it pertains to disaster recovery as a service and business continuity. So we're going to uh, what, what we'll look at is uh, are some IT trends, uh, what the analysts are saying, addressing the problem, and then a little bit about the, the Seagate uh, disaster recovery as a service. So what's on the top of IT leaders' minds? As you can see here from Gartner's CIO agenda survey, the top three are obviously business, uh, 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 BI and, and analytics, uh, infrastructure and data center, and cloud. And as you can see, there's been some growth from 2014 to 2015, 5% uh, growth in priority of cloud, and you know this is where we're going to spend our, our time discussing, or what we're going to be uh, discussing today. So today's businesses, no, 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 uh, no, no secrets here are always on, uh, and more and more organizations are becoming very, very, uh, 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 are, 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 are surrounded by 24 by 7 operations and have a very low tolerance for downtime. We also need to be able to maintain regulations uh, requiring business continuity and disaster recovery plans and making sure that these plans are actually tested. And then being able to do more with less. As we know in the IT world, we're always asked to do more with less, whether it's multiple platforms or geographically dispersed IT environments. Um, but, you know, one of the things that, that I'd like to talk about here is, you know, if your company had a complete site outage, how quickly would you be able to recover your mission critical systems? You know, even if you're able to address or even if you address data protection, you still need to consider disaster recovery or a disaster recovery strategy, particularly if you have things or need things like uh, to ensure business continuity uh, or let's say, uh, you know, work, you work in an industry where downtime just isn't tolerable, financial industry, uh, uh, the healthcare industry and things of that nature. Maybe you have minimal resources uh, or you need to address uh, regulatory compliance and auditing. Uh, or maybe, you know, you have multiple platforms uh, in your environment that you just need to be able to provide ironclad protection for. So on the rise in uh, 2015, and there's no, uh, this is, you know, I think something that uh, a lot of people are talking about nowadays, uh, especially this year, are hybrid cloud and full cloud services. Um, some of the other pieces on here are, 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 are no, uh, are, 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 are no surprise to most, most of us here. Uh, budget constraints, data explosion, virtualization software, and a lot of times what people ask me is, you know, so Matt, what, what, is, what is hybrid cloud, you know, or, you know, what, what can we expect or, or, you know, how do we design or develop these types of solutions to fit our organizations? Well, you know, a hybrid cloud or a cloud infrastructure, right, you know, the difference is, is where the data sits, right? So in a hybrid cloud solution, this allows me to uh, leverage local resources so that I can protect my information locally and recover it locally. Um, this gives me, you know, the, the backup and recovery capabilities that I would need to recover, say, a system if it uh, were to crash or become corrupted, um, or to be able to uh, withstand or, or, or have a, uh, a solution for, you know, people disasters, right? A lot of times, you know, we we focused in in recent times uh, around some of these uh, major natural disasters that have been happening. You know, whether it's uh, hurricanes coming up the East Coast, uh, whether it's tornadoes tearing through the center of the country, whether it's flooding in Colorado. Um, we're we're you know we're we're hearing more and more of this. But but what you know we we uh, what I tend to focus on more so is around the people, right? Uh, and the reason, you know, is is that we create more of our own disasters than any other uh, natural disaster out there. A uh, prime example, uh, I had a customer uh, in Texas, and you know, I, I I don't understand this, but they 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 one of their uh, IT administrators uh, went into their uh, server room, set a bottle of water on top of their Citrix farm while he opened up the KVM tray. Uh, when he closed the KVM tray, the mouse fell off, knocked the water over, and shorted out, and basically destroyed their entire Citrix farm. 
And so, you know, those are the types of disasters that you really just don't plan for, right? Now, you can always go back and say, well, don't ever bring any liquids into the, into the data center, right? Because, you know, Lord knows accidents do happen, and, you know, you want to be able to, to, to help mitigate any of those types of disasters. Um, so, you know, hybrid cloud, full-service cloud solutions are going to allow you to leverage economies of scale uh, so that, you know, you can really uh, have that peace of mind knowing that your data is protected uh, from both natural, man-made, and accidental disasters. So, um, you know, as, as we've discussed here, you know, DR is increasingly a high priority, but budgets are flat. Um, I don't have the 2014 or 2015 numbers on here, but I have seen uh, some, of the, some of the numbers, and they haven't increased uh, hardly at all. Uh, now we saw a slight increase in 2015, um, you know, from the uh, uh, in, in IT spending and IT budgets, um, but we're still we have a, a, a pretty big task in front of us uh, to be able to uh, provide disaster recovery uh, in an environment where it may not be uh, financially feasible to go and leverage uh, another data center or have uh, you know hardware and support maintenance for that hardware and people to stand that hardware up in the event of a disaster and the network connectivity and the power and the cooling and all of the things that go into truly uh, putting together a disaster recovery uh, solution as well as integrating that into your business continuity plan. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't talk about is they talk or they talk about a lot a, a lot about disaster recovery but they don't talk a lot about business continuity. And you know, the, the, the business continuity side of it, I think, is, 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 is the most important piece to make sure that your disaster recovery solution is also a part of that business continuity plan. Uh, and tying all of those together is something that we do here at Seagate uh, very, very well. So you know, um, one of the things that, uh, that, that, I, uh, uh, that, that I look at are, are things like IT resiliency. You know, we need to ensure IT resiliency um, and, and make sure that we're providing a, a level of protection for our systems, uh, whether we're leveraging public cloud, private cloud, or a hybrid cloud, where we're really um, leveraging kind of the, the best of both worlds, right? I can still maintain all of my data and infrastructure here, but as opposed to going and buying another data center or moving my data to another location where I have to build out a data center and network, I'm going to leverage the hybrid cloud approach to really uh, help me with that IT resiliency. And things that you need to really make sure that you pay attention to are things like applications, you know, your applications. What is your ability or their ability uh, to run within that cloud infrastructure, right? Are you going to have compute issues? Are you going to be able to uh, 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 you know, provide the network resources uh, as well as the access to that information? And are you going to be able to do that in a secure method, uh, from a secure methodology? Um, and then, you know, the, the other very important thing to note and to, to always keep in mind when you're thinking about disaster recovery is making sure that your data is distributed across geographic risk zones. Um, you know, I, it's it's interesting, right? Because I, 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 we've been doing this for for quite some time, and uh, I've heard many, many different stories, including customers of ours who uh, were storing data in our cloud, but their primary disaster recovery was, you know, uh, a prime example, an uh, organization in Manhattan had a had a uh, data center in New Jersey, um, and all of their data was replicated real time. Uh, synchronously over uh, into the Jersey data center, and when Sandy came up the East Coast, it put both their data centers underwater. Now, luckily enough, they had all of their data also stored off-site with us, and we were able to take that data and reconstruct it so that we could get them back up online and in business. Um, so, um, keep those things in mind, right? Because just because you know we're 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 uh, you know we have our data in two locations, and maybe those locations are. Uh, you know, uh, 30 miles apart or 40 miles apart, um, you know, just understand that the area, know, you know, what things can happen and make sure that that data is protected. Uh, make sure that you can get your systems back online and that you're maintaining that IT resiliency. So, you know, the disaster recovery as a service uh, industry is a relatively new industry. Um, it's interesting because I've seen it really evolve through 
uh, when we originally called it re uh, a remote disaster recovery, and then you know it went from an RDR to cloud disaster recovery to disaster recovery as a service. And we've really been a leader in this marketplace uh, from day one. Now, one of the uh, really cool things, and is what you'll see here um, on this slide, is the uh, Seagate Evolt solution uh, sits right here in the leader section. Um, and one of the really interesting things is, is if you look at some of the other leaders like SunGuard and IBM, we're also helping them with their disaster recovery solutions. So not only are we a leader, but we're also helping other leaders provide better solutions to their end customers so that they can get things like, you know, remote, uh, 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 remote disaster recovery, disaster recovery as a service, or have geographically dispersed locations and solutions that will fit the needs of the customers as well as their budgets. So um, when is a good time for downtime? Uh, you know, I ask this question so many times, and it's, it, it, it's you know, it, it's more and more that, that, you know, there's no good time for downtime, right? You know, whether I'm losing my, uh, uh, my email server, whether I lost network, or someone inadvertently put the wrong DNS route into my router and all traffic stopped flowing into my infrastructure. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's really hard to, uh, to, 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 you know, kind of equate, you know, what downtime really means. And, you know, if you take a look at the right side uh, of, of the slide, you know, Gartner investigated, you know, how, uh, how, how much do, how much downtime businesses feel they could, you know, truly absorb. And if you had, if you had taken this poll 10, maybe even five years ago, you'd see widely different results. That's because businesses today are so interconnected and dependent on IT systems to run day-to-day -day operations that the impact of downtime, it, it, it has skyrocketed over, over the, the, the last couple of years. And as you can see, you know, from the numbers on the right here, the majority of businesses uh, surveyed say, you know, they need to be uh, back, uh, back up in less than 24 hours. So it's important to make sure that, you know, we understand exactly what it is uh, downtime means to our organization. And, from the left side of this uh, chart here, um, 84 to 90,000, that's an average across organizations uh, that IDC did a, uh, a strategic research on, or did a strategic research on. Um, and, you know, these numbers, I think, will vary, but I think that they get really close uh, in the industries that really focus on uh, transactions or, or that are highly transactional. Uh, or, or billable, uh, maybe they're a service industry, maybe there's a financial industry and, uh, you know, my system's down, I mean, I'm not trading. Uh, or maybe I'm uh, in the legal industry and my systems are down and I can't get access to uh, uh, digital uh, information for my clients uh, to, to, to help with litigation and things of that nature. Um, you know, all the way into manufacturing, right? If I lose the IT systems within a manufacturing facility, um, you know, how would that impact not only manufacturing but production? And um, you'll see these numbers vary from industry to industry. And you really want to make sure that you understand within your own organization what does downtime mean? How much does that cost? And how do I help mitigate that risk? So backup alone is not disaster recovery. And, you know, we talk about this quite often. What happens if you lose your primary site? This is where you need to have a plan for being able to recover that information from more than just a backup, or maybe the backup is replicated off-site and has the ability to recover that information in an off-site, or maybe you need real-time replication uh, to perform things like maintenances or, uh, or, 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 or to be able to handle outages, uh, minor outages. Maybe you're not in, an, in, in a, uh, a disaster-prone area, but you have a frequency of, you know, uh, people working on the roads and they cut power lines and they cut fiber lines. Um, and so those are things that you have to think about. And, and, and just having a local backup is not, uh, is not really going to provide you that true uh, uh, disaster recovery need. 
And so, you know, how about a secondary site? Uh, you know, do you have people to, to operate this uh, information, to, to manage it, to bring it online, to, to maintain that secondary facility? And does that secondary site, uh, is it geographically uh, lo or located in, a, in a, 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 a different geographical risk zone? Uh, as we were discussing before, making sure that that information sits outside of your theme or region is always, I think, a good practice to start with. Now, um, the other things that, that we also need to be very, very aware of are our compliance and audit concerns, right? Um, am I governed by PCI, FINRA, HIPAA, SOX? Uh, you know, go down the list of, of alphabet soup, and, and, and you will typically find most organizations these days have to adhere to one or the other. Um, and making sure that the provider that is uh, putting this together uh, and that is uh, that is uh, providing your disaster recovery solution can meet all of these audits. And the one thing to also note, right, is you know we have been doing this for quite some time before SSA 16 was even a standard. Um, and that's another thing, right? How long has your disaster recovery provider or the disaster recovery provider you've been looking at? Um, how long have they been doing this? How successful have they been? Have they been certified through their entire uh, lifespan? And that's one thing I, I'm very proud to say Seagate has been. Uh, since we've been providing these solutions, we were SAS 70 Type 2 all the way through to the current SSA 16 SOC 2 compliance. And so things that we don't really think about, right, when in a disaster, and this, is, this takes me back to another, you know, another story uh, uh, or actually another uh, 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 incident. Um, where, you know, when, when Hurricane Sandy came through, it, it quite literally shut down New York City. Um, there were organizations that, that, uh, that, that weren't able to come back online for 30, you know, 30 plus days. But what's even more important than that, when they went to call to bring their tapes back into the city, guess what they weren't able to do? They weren't able to bring uh, those, those trucks in to be able to restore any information or to have that information readily available and restored uh, in another location became more and more challenging. And so knowing exactly what it is that, that could impact my environment and knowing that I have critical, app, uh, you know, critical applications that need to be protected, um, you, know, you need to be able to have a provider like Seagate that can provide things like uh, you know, tw uh, 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 data center uh, data center availability as well as disaster recovery for your mission critical applications for uh, in some cases months. Uh, we had organizations that failed over to our facility uh, and I believe were there for over uh, four months as they were or five months as they were rebuilding their data center and you know we we've, we've failed all of them back since then but you know the, 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 the key message here is to make sure that you don't think in a, uh, in, in a singular focused manner, right, my backups are good enough because I store my tapes off site, but what if I can't get the trucks into the city? Um, or maybe my, my data center is just outside of the city or in, in any uh, a, a risk zone. Um, and, you know, both of those areas are now impacted, and so how do I get my operations back up and online? And it's mission critical to businesses because most businesses will go out of business if they can't maintain some level of operations to get their customers or to service their customers. So remote access to your critical systems is paramount. All you need from uh, Seagate is an internet connection and we can give you access to systems in the cloud via secure SSL VPN, IPsec tunnels, and this is actually, uh, this brings me to a great, uh, a great uh, a solution that we put together for C-Store. Um, with one of their customers there in Arizona, and one of the reasons they chose our solution was the ability to kind of take the next step into the, the disaster recovery arena, right? Being able to protect all of that information on site and then flip the switch when they want to move into the disaster recovery as a service uh, portion of the solution and just move that data into the cloud very effectively and efficiently. And that was the key reason that they chose our solution was because we were very flexible. We gave them all the options that they needed in order to provide both local disaster recovery and remote disaster recovery for, uh, uh, you know, for their internal customers, uh, the business leaders and things of that nature. 
So, you know, we're going to provide everything you need to keep your business up and running from networks to storage, external IP addresses, and more. Um, really, at the end of the day, all you need to do is make sure that your local ISP has your DNS redirects to our location, and then in the event of a disaster, you call them up, redirect the IP addresses over to our facility, and you're back up and running in a matter of, you know, minutes if not hours, or hours if not minutes. Um, and then being able to uh, use the Seagate eVault uh, until the site is back up and in business. Um, you know, that, that's, that, that is also a critical piece of this because, you know, Lord knows you don't want to be, uh, you know, constrained to, oh, I've only got 30 days that I can run in this uh, infrastructure. And so, you know, with that, we have guaranteed SLAs, one hour, 24 hour, 48 hour, and now self-managed. And what this does is it gives you the ability to use uh, the, the, uh, the, the cloud uh, as your disaster recovery location, but maybe from a self-managed perspective, maybe you don't need, maybe you've got the staff, you don't really need to uh, have a fully managed S SLA guaranteed uh, uh, recovery service. And so we've also offered uh, recently a self-managed recovery. And being able to run your business critical applications in our cloud for as long as you need is important in making sure that that infrastructure is in a, uh, a tier three or tier four facility uh, and is SSA 16 uh, 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 SSA 16 SOC 2 compliant. So um, with that, you know, I want to tell you guys that, that, that we really provide you with a, a, a team of experts that are by your side every step of the way. Um, you know, the, the, the continuity and recovery planning, testing documentation, uh, an expert team to help you pass audits, outage declarations, and being able to have experts manage that process for you. Um, you know, we're, we're, we are a people-driven organization doing things like storm tracking to see what risk zones are, are, are affected and, and proactively reaching out to our customers. We're doing things like um, taking all of their information and documenting that, DR test results, testing that, uh, that disaster recovery and business continuity plan to make sure that it is rock solid and will always work in any event across the board. Knowing this, having this information, being able to pass this over to auditors is extremely valuable and helps save a lot of time and money. And as you can see here, we do things from uh, restore time metrics to how many uh, restores and the times that it took to the systems that we're protecting to uh, vetted workflows that make sure that we are able to get that data back up and online uh, very fast. And so with that, I will leave you guys with this, the, uh, the, the, the different uh, packages that we have and how they uh, basically cover the different environments. The one-hour SLA, hosted Active Directory in a virtual machine, protected servers, storage, external IP addresses, VPN. Uh, and this is an instantaneous failover uh, or, or within minutes, right? Maybe not instantaneous because of latency over the line. But I can use the, the one-hour SLA to fail over uh, you know, any time during the year just to perform maintenance. And so the one-hour SLA is going to provide you quite a few different options. And then we also support things like AIX, iSeries, NetApp, uh, and Windows Server's platforms in that one-hour SLA. And then you have the 24- and 48-hour SLAs, which are really providing backup and restore capabilities uh, all the way down to the self-managed SLA, where we're just providing you a infrastructure to uh, recover that information in. And so with that, I want to say thank you all very much for your time today, and I will turn this back uh, for any questions. Thank you so much, Matt. Great insight and certainly very timely information. So thank you again. At this time, we will open it up for questions. Uh, if you have anything, please definitely post it to the questions pane in the control panel, and we'll try and squeeze in a couple. It looks like we do have a couple quick questions. We'll get through them quickly. Um, Question one for Matt. How do you get my data from my location into the cloud? So that's actually a very easy question. We, we have actually designed our solution to, uh, to, to be able to make the data portable in a secure methodology. Uh, we encrypt everything coming from the server out, AES 256-bit level encryption, and put that into a seeding device and move that up to the cloud. Uh, prime example, the customer that we're working with, with C-Store, uh, when they decide to turn the lights on for disaster recovery, we'll take all of their data from their current replicated site and just move it into our disaster recovery facility. And we build everything around that disaster recovery facility uh, and seeding process to make sure it's not only secure, but it's efficient. Great. Thank you. 
Uh, one other question. Actually, there are a couple more. Uh, I think they'll be quick. Do you support things like IBM iSeries or AIX? Yes, we do. Um, iSeries and AIX. Uh, we also support a, a host of other applications and, and uh, uh, platforms. All of your major enterprise-based platforms and applications, uh, we do have uh, the, the ability to design uh, as well as help customize for things that are uh, maybe outside of the box, right? Um, you know, things that most people maybe wouldn't protect. We can have those discussions and really help customize a solution that best fits the, uh, the, the business goals of the customer. Excellent. Uh, and one more question, we'll squeeze it in. Can I test my DR solution more than once per year? Absolutely. In fact, I have customers that test it in some cases once a quarter. Um, we test every uh, we test every uh, disaster recovery implementation uh, up front, uh, so you have a fully tested solution um, that that is delivered to you day one, and then we test that one time per year. Now that doesn't preclude you from being able to go in and say, "Hey." I want to also pay for doing this once every quarter, right? There are a lot of organizations that are very dynamic. They're always changing and need to be able to maintain that level of dynamic uh, change within their disaster recovery infrastructure and want to test and, and, and ensure that resiliency uh, on, a, on, on a more frequent basis. So the answer is absolutely. And we can customize those recoveries uh, and times and schedule them based